Hi, it's Tom here from FDS, and today we're going to look at how to fit mod motors. And uh, this is a common question that people ask, is about how to fit them into the cages and also how to set up the polarities. Now I'm working here with a, a couple of 3240s, the genuine Bushi ones again, and uh, those are bought in E-Flight packaging, and um, these are now getting a bit scarce. So first thing you've got to do, obviously, if you've got one of these, is you've got to get the pinion off. Um, do be very careful taking the pinion off, don't use excessive force. Um, I tend to use a pair of very flat nose pliers and just gently, don't push on the bearing, push gently on the bearing housing, like that. There you see that clears it. You don't want to damage the bronze bearing down in there. That's the thing you don't want to damage, just to prove that that's done nothing to it at all. You need a tester as well. Tools wise, these are useful, it's just a double, the triple A cell holder. So these will turn fine at three volts. There you go, you can hear that's working beautifully. And uh, we'll need that when we come to test a few bits and pieces. This is a rapid strike flywheel cage. As you can see, I've taken the old motors out. The first thing we've got to do is just clear the top of all of these uh, RF suppressors and um, I think there's probably a flyback diode or something in there as well. And uh, the way to do these is to very carefully, you must be very careful of the motor tags. Don't cut anywhere near the motor tags. You can see I'm looking at these little silver legs here. I'm using a sharp pair of side cutters to just remove these little silver legs. Don't break them off like some idiots do on the internet, for God's sake. Same applies to the circuit boards on rapid strikes. Those must be desoldered individually. You can't just pull them apart because you will break the tags on your motor. So when you've gone down to this point, you can see we've got these big lumps of solder and we've also got the wire still soldered on. And then you will need your soldering iron and uh, you'll just need to melt your way out of those and just clear them up a little bit. My soldering iron now needs a new tip. As I've used it so long now the tip is oxidised so it takes a little bit longer to heat up. You want to clear off all the excess little bits of the old uh, components. Just I find getting them hot and then tapping them. There we go. Nearly gone. Just one little bit of wire there left. And that's that. So you want a nice clean connection like that. It doesn't matter if you leave some of the solder on, that's actually a good thing. That's called tinning. And pre tinning the couple of contacts helps later on when you come to make motor connections. So you can leave that. So I'm just going to clean up the other side. And then these, I'll, uh, I'll get off with a quick flick of the soldering and I'll liquefy them. You, if you've got a solder sucker, I know some of those kits that you can buy in places like Home Depot have a solder sucker. It's worth liquefying that, just using the solder sucker to take it off because it just tidies it up. Okay, you can see that I've uh, got the components laid out for you now, and I've cleaned up the motors. And uh, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to clean up the cage, but I'm going to stop briefly just to look at stock motors. Now, if you've got stock strife motors or stock rapid strike motors, they usually come out, and, and in the case of the rapid strike, you've got that circuit board. But with the strife ones, you can see when you take the stock motors out, if you're just rewiring and going to use these again, it's very easy to lose the polarity, and I've done it before, and end up with wires everywhere trying to get the dart to shoot out. So the best thing you can do is to leave a little stub of wire attached to the inductors, and then you get your marker pen, and all I do is I write positive there on the front two, and negative there on the back two. And then if I then separate those motors, I know when I come to put them back in another, in another blaster, that if I connect the negative to the back and the positive to the front, um, where I've marked the plus and the plus and the minus and the minus, then the motors will spin forwards. That's only for the stock ones, as you'll see, it's slightly different with the modified motors. So with the stock motors, just make a note of where the, each connector goes onto the PCP or onto the inductors. It's easy with strikes because they're really simple to see. Um, I suspect that they're all wired this way, so probably the back two terminals are negative and the front two terminals are positive. And uh, that should give you a good indication of, of your polarity on stock motors for rewires. Now modified motors all have, pretty much all the ones I've seen, have a um, little red dot on them to signify the positive terminal of the motor and no red dot on the other side. And this includes Michels and, and Falcons and Black Pigs and pretty much all the CAN motors. Now the other problem with a lot of these CAN motors is they don't actually fit into the block. They don't fit into the motor block. And you don't want to force them in. If you have to use any kind of tool to put these motors in, 
beyond um, a really, really good hard push or maybe a very gentle um, a bit of work with a pair of water pump pliers, then you're going to break them. And if you put too much pressure on here, which is the bearing housing, or on this back plate, you will squeeze the shaft and that will render your motor dead. So if you do that, you've destroyed your motor and it's got to go in the skip. There's very little way that you can undo the damage if you've squashed the bearing. That's it, it's game over. So it's worth taking some time to clean the shell out. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the removal of these little ribs. I'll bring it up to the camera here in a minute. And you can see them inside here, these little ribs here. We've got to take them out, all of them in the Rapid Strikes case. This is a Rapid Strike shell. They've, shell. they've all got to be, come, to be paired out and so that it's flat. In the strife, there's a little bit less to take out, especially in some of the earlier ones. So just when you're using a strife cage, be beware that you can take too much out. So if you shave your strife cage too much, then you'll have to pack it with some little bits of plastic scrap in there to get the motor fit tight. And don't be tempted to wrap E-tape around the end of the motor because it's really stupid. And if you get running hot 130s, they can get hot enough to melt the E-tape, which is a bad idea. So we're going to just quickly do that. Now, the way that I do them is I use this blade. Um, or you can use a, a tiny chisel, a very small chisel with a slight curve to it or a carving tool. There's a number of different blades that you can use but what I like about this blade is that you can just slide it down a little bit at a time. Mm, there we go. Down the rib. It literally shaves the rib right off. You must go all the way to the bottom. If you don't go all the way down to the bottom your motor won't fit. So we're just shaving this rib off and then cutting the excess out the bottom. And you can see there's the rib coming off. So you want to go all the way to the bottom down here. If you don't get right to the bottom you won't be able to fully seat the motor and when the motor is seated the end of the bearing cage should just come up flush here. If you don't seat it fully you'll shed your flywheels which is a bad idea. So we've got to go around the edges as well and again the advantage about the shape of this blade is that it does allow you to go down into these tight corners because it's a uh, spear point as opposed to a hatchet point blade. You can tell it's a spear point because it's like that. Although the back edge isn't sharpened, um, the front edge is and it's, uh, it's perfect for that. Obviously if you have got an old hobby knife like this one or an old Swiss, Swiss knife like this one, make sure it gets properly sharpened. This one's razor sharp and just bear that in mind while you're playing with it to keep the blade inside the cage. So you have to go all the way around and then at the end I tend to get the knife and I just shave around the bottom just to ensure that I've got rid of all the ribs. So I'm going to go away and go and do those ribs and when I've shaved all those ribs we'll come back and I'll show you how to install the motors. Okay so I've shaved everything off inside there and the other thing that I do when I'm finished is I just get a little roll of uh, fine sandpaper, this is 240, and just smooth everything inside so there's no sharp edges left and then make sure you get any debris out of there you don't want any bits of plastic um, between the motor housing and the bottom of the things just give them a good blowout if you can just to clear any residue in there